As producers, we need to be able to add new crew to Shotgun and assign the crew to the projects they'll be working on. We also need to have an understanding of how permissions will drive what our crew can see and do. Let's start by uncovering a couple of ways to quickly add a user to Shotgun, but it's best to add people from a people page when we are adding many users. From our project overview page, we can add people via the people widget by selecting Advanced. We can also add people via crew planning, which you can get to via the people widget on the project overview page, or it can be accessed via the apps menu dropdown in the global nav. We'll talk more about crew planning in the next topic. We can also add people by pressing the N key on our keyboard, then P, and then scrolling down with our arrow key to the person entity. Lastly, we can add people via any people page, whether it's a people page in the global nav, project nav, or custom page. We'll head to the main people page in our global nav to add people, since we initially updated this page for this purpose. From here, we can start adding our crew and assigning them to projects. We'll add a first name, last name, department, which we can create as we go and will help us in crew planning later, email, login, which needs to be unique, permission group, which we will talk about a little later in this topic. We'll want to make sure that users in the artist and vendor roles are assigned to the projects they'll need to see, and the projects field drives this. Admins and managers by default can see all projects, but this can always be updated in the advanced permission settings. The status by default is active, but we can make it disabled if we aren't going to start working for a bit. Only active users will be able to log in to Shotgun, and Shotgun only bills for those active users. For the password, Shotgun will email the user a clickable link to create a password, but we can also set the new password explicitly. If we're going to set the password, we just want to make sure to communicate that with the user. Either way, the user will need to make a password strong enough to comply with our strong password standards, which are MPAA compliant. Once we create the user, Shotgun will always email the new person upon creation with a welcome message and information about how to log in. The user will need to create a new password to gain access to the site, and once they are logged in, they'll see information regarding the project they are assigned to. Now, going back to the page where we created a lot of people from, we've added more people and thumbnails and can start to filter and parse information. First, we want to filter by people assigned to the signal project only. Then, we want to group everyone by department and permission group. Lastly, we'll assign everyone to a group or groups so that we can address notes to groups once we start collaborating. If a group doesn't exist yet, we can easily create one from this view. I'll go ahead and create groups for each department. We can also manage groups from the Groups page via the User Settings menu. Now we have a pretty cool page that we can keep organized for our crew. Let's talk a little bit about permissions since they are behind what people see and do. Each user belongs to a single permission group. The permission group determines what the user can see, create, and update in Shotgun. The default permission groups are admin, manager, artist, and vendor. Permissions can be tweaked and refined by an admin. Admins have the most permissions followed by manager, then artists, and lastly vendors who have the least amount of permissions. Like we covered earlier, permissions can be controlled via the User Settings menu drop-down Permissions People page. Here, admins can rename, duplicate, and tweak permission settings. At our studio, we needed to make a supervisor permission role that is based on the manager role. So, an admin duplicated the manager role, called it supervisor, and then restricted access to a few additional fields. Supervisors will only be able to edit certain fields on tasks so that they don't affect the schedule we are maintaining. Now we can apply the supervisor role to some of our soups in the Signal project. Artists and vendors also have the most conditional permissions. Conditional permissions allow the user to see or do something if they meet a certain criteria. We can see these conditions under the summary part of the permission role, looking for condition on. 
For instance, we can see that artists can conditionally update the status field on tasks if they are assigned to that task. Conditional permissions are hard-coded into Shotgun, so in order to update or remove a condition, that will need to be done by someone on the Shotgun support team if you have super awesome support. Alternately, we can always create a new permission role based on one that has less conditions applied, like manager or admin, and then restrict items from there. There's a lot to learn about when it comes to permissions, so if you'd like to learn more, visit our support site.